This is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. Today I'm going to be talking about supplementation to boost your immune system. And I'm going to be discussing different ways to help you stay mentally healthy during this quarantine. And after that, we're going to pop open a bottle and see what comes out. I'm excited. This is Poppin' Bottles. So Bree, what's going on? How you been? We've been doing pretty good. We've been staying active, doing different um, community outreach things. And um, I'm still seeing patients off and on. We're doing a lot of telehealth currently mm -hmm. in our office or with our office. Um, what about yourself? I've just been quarantined. I haven't seen anybody in a, about a month, I think. This is certainly a weird time to start a podcast. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> So for all you listeners out there, we are actually recording this podcast on, on Zoom. So you may hear a little feedback and may, it's not going to be as clear as our other ones will be in the future. But for right now, it's the best you can do. We're trying to stay safe, stay home and help like break the um, curve. So we got for me today, Bree. Lay it on me. Well, today... We will be talking about in my section, um, mental health. I can already tell you just the first two weeks of this quarantine, I've had probably four panic attacks. I have anxiety really bad and, and just not knowing the unknown. I'm a control freak and I would wake up in the middle of the night, like not being able to breathe. So in order to help stimulate my brain, I have started organizing my house, which I feel like everybody has on like Facebook and Instagram. I've gone for walks just to be outside in my neighborhood. Um, I'm lucky enough where I live on a lot of land where I don't see anyone else while I'm walking. But um, for you that may live in an apartment or in like a neighborhood where you're not allowed to go out and take a stroll, you can always do like YouTube videos, home exercise videos, meditation, yoga, just something to keep your brain going. So you can always, oh, and another thing you can do is um, coloring. There's adult coloring books. That yes, helps. My, my wife has been coloring actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's her like favorite book she's going to? I have no idea. I just know okay, she's on the patio coloring with the kids and she's <laughs> yeah. happy as a player. <laughs> Oh, what so about, uh, are, sorry, how about, uh, have you looked into that Headspace app? I've heard good things. I haven't used it yet. I actually have not. I hadn't even heard about that. What is it? Yeah. Tell me. It, it's some sort of guided meditation app. And I believe they're doing some sort of free thing or reduced price thing for healthcare workers currently due to COVID. Well, hey, I will check that out this week. And then next week I can give you an update on it. Sounds good. So, sorry, I interrupted. What were you saying? No, I'm just telling everybody that this is the time where a lot of people, depending on, on if you're an introvert or an extrovert, that some people may start having certain feelings and anxiety and all of that is normal. Do not think it's not normal. We are being taken from our everyday routine and it's being misplaced. And that brings up some underlying issues that you may not know about. But it's okay to feel that way and i want people to be aware of their feelings and get help because I've, unfortunately we have read in the news that some people have committed suicide because of this and that's the last thing i want to happen to anyone so that's like the main thing is like try to find something that can make your brain or stimulate your brain to get away from those thoughts and that way you're able to kind of control your issue a little bit what about just some good old escapism, like reading? I mean, I know everyone's Netflixing, but I think- Yeah, uh, Netflix, read as much reading. As but sometimes like reading is better, I think, than Netflix. It depends on what you're watching, but you need to have physical exercise too. Mm -hmm. You need those endorphins. Yeah, I can't, that's gotta be so hard for people caged up in a little apartment in these urban areas. I can't, I can't imagine how they're coping. That's why I keep saying, exercise. like we, you can do like yoga. You don't have to be outside to do yoga. Open the window. Let the fresh air come in and do yoga and meditate or Pilates. They even have those apps where you can do it from your phone, put it on your TV and have like, you could be in like Lake Tahoe or something on the screen and then go into a different place. 
sound advice. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, what's so, going on in your neck of the woods? My neck of the woods? Well, I wanted to talk about supplementation. Uh, as you know, I got certified in nutrition recently. That's what I do with my downtime here. Uh, and there's two supplements today I want to talk about, vitamin D and zinc. They both will boost your immune system. So let me back up first. Let's talk about viruses because viruses are weird, right? Like, are they even alive? Let's just start there. What do you think? Do you think they're alive? They are alive. Yeah, yeah, right? So I guess that's kind of a philosophical like debate right there because mm -hmm. they don't need to breathe. They don't technically reproduce. They're just like a set of blueprints that get injected into a cell and more like replicate. It's really, really bizarre. But anyways, so they, what they are, it's like a, like a coat of protein and outside the protein coat is like a layer of fat or lipids. That's where vitamin D comes into play. So apparently it looks like vitamin D can actually break up sort of that fatty layer on the outside of the virus, which is like it's a protective force field. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then zinc, zinc has to do with the RNA. So what happens is the virus goes into the cell. It basically impregnates the cell with a set of RNA. It's basically like DNA, right? And tells the cell to keep making more replications of itself. So the zinc comes in and blocks that, that mechanism. So in some studies, if there was a study in 2016, where zinc supplementation was found to reduce pneumonia in uh, school-aged children. So oh. pretty interesting stuff. Here's something kind of funny and weird that I stumbled upon in this research here. So zinc, um, depletion in zinc has been associated with lack of smell or taste. But what's weird is that's something they're talking about with coronavirus. That's so, like one of the first signs. All right, so I don't know what to make of that. Hmm. Well, there's a lot to make of this damn virus. I mean, we don't know enough about it yet. Um, I do feel like, which to your point, vitamin D, where do you get vitamin D from? Well, I, as far as I know, 15 minutes of sun is enough to get you the vitamin D you need for your, uh, your daily intake. By the way, so, vitamin D is fat soluble, not water soluble. So you can take too much vitamin D. Yes. Be a little bit careful with it. So that is why um, they feel like um, during the summertime, this virus will kind of go away. But then their concern, their concern is it's going to come back again during the wintertime. Yeah. Because during the summertime, people are out and about mm -hmm. on the beach, hanging out. During the wintertime, most people are inside. Interesting. Uh, yeah, because there's been a lot of talk of the seasonality of viruses. So yes. One thing I had read too was maybe humidity, maybe uh, a factor too, because mm -hmm. this anything that's droplet, like uh, coronavirus, seems to be droplet. Is last I read. Yeah. It's, yeah. So if someone coughs, that droplet can travel a certain distance. But if it's humid out, the the other water molecules in the air will help suppress it and let let it fall down to the ground faster. So that's I don't know. That's another thing they're thinking may may be a reason why heat can actually reduce some of the, the flu season. Well, there's a lot about this darn virus that we don't know about, but we will be updating everyone and keeping track and the latest and greatest that's coming out. Um, but besides that, I think the main thing is to remember to possibly start taking vitamin D. If you can, not now, but later on, get your blood drawn, see where your level is, because that could be why some people are getting feeling the symptoms a little bit more severe than others. Um, see where your vitamin D level is. If you need to increase it, you can increase it. Um, and it's not just D, it's like there's D2 and there's D3. So you should really get your blood work drawn to see which level. Um, and then also the zinc, having taken just the recommended over the counter, you can even get zinc off of Amazon. Doing that will help protect you and help build up your immune system. And then staying mentally healthy, I think we could beat this thing and everybody will enjoy and appreciate life a little bit better once we overcome it. And what about um, food sources for zinc? Let's see. I got a list right here. Whole grains, liver, eggs, seafood, oysters, oatmeal, 
peas, beans, and even maple syrup. Hey, I love pancakes. Just give me a reason <laughs> to eat them. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of food and beverage, I think I'm ready. Are you? I'm ready to pop a bottle. Okay. All right. What are you using these days to open wine? Are you using just a regular wine key? I'm old fashioned. Old yes. fashioned? Yeah. yeah For some reason, this. the electronic ones don't like to work with me. Yeah. I feel like the motor wears out. Now I'm using this big mamba pajama thing. It's kind of fun. All right. So what are you drinking? All right. Tonight, I will be sipping on a white wine. It is called Gavi. It is a Italian wine from the northern part of Italy. I think it's northwestern part of Italy. Um, it is really good. It's semi-sweet, not too sweet, but it's not dry. It tastes totally different from like a Chardonnay or a Pinot Grigio. Um, if I had to compare compare it to either one of those it would be more like a pinot grigio but it still doesn't taste like that it's sweeter than that but it's not as sweet as a riesling so it's right in the middle it, uh, i love it i've had a couple of bottles of these not not, in, not tonight but tonight. Over yeah, the last. just say it <laughs> <laughs> what about you did you get that at uh, total wine where do you get that mm. well since we are quarantined we, um, there's a restaurant right down the street called Sorella's. They're an Italian restaurant. They, um, we ordered food and I was like, is it true we can buy a bottle of wine too? And they're like, yep. And so they have it. So you buy it directly from the restaurant? I did. So you're probably paying a good premium on that, right? Actually, no, they upped it about $20. And the store is 25. Oh, that's not bad at all. Usually uh -huh. markup's like 300%. So that's mm -hmm. good. Nice. Good people. So. I, got a I, I am drinking a Bogle Merlot. It's one of the staples in my cabinet. Have you ever had Bogle Merlot? Oh, yeah. I love that one. I love Bogle in general. Just uh, I don't really care what grape they make. They make everything solid. Um, and it's a good bang for the buck kind of wine. How much is that one? What's that? How much is that one? Uh, I want to say it was under $10. Now, I think they kind of were dropping prices before or during this whole uh, coronavirus thing. So okay. it may be a couple dollars more normally. But uh, they always are reasonable, very drinkable wines. You know, everyone I have, I'm like, yeah, that's a solid wine. I think I was laughing because I was reading on, um, I think it was Instagram. I was looking at a little article and it said um, the World Health Organization said drinking alcohol is not the best coping mechanism during this quarantine. I was like, it has worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to have some balance, right? Yes. And it's Friday. So cheers. There you go. Hey, cheers. So since we opened up our bottles of wine, what would we like to open up about? I'll let you go first. Hmm. Well, okay. Let's so, talk about your past. Possibly, I want to say, well, kind of Corona, but not Corona. Um, I've been full on wedding mode because of I got engaged last year. So you probably hear me discussing about my wedding and stressors and everything that's going on. But I will say that my team and every vendor that I'm working with has been on point with like contacting me and reassuring me that everything's still set to go for October. Because unfortunately, a lot of other people had to cancel their weddings or reschedule them. And they're rescheduling them to the fall. So they were like, well, you have this date first. We want to make sure that your room is reserved, whatever you want, you have. And then everyone else that's rescheduling will just have to work around that. So I really appreciate that because it can be stressful not knowing if I'm going to get married in my wedding date. And I have spent all this money already. So maybe this is uh, <laughs> contributing to the panic attacks? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever always had uh, anxiety issues? Yeah, I have anxiety. I just know how to control it. What I about like, like meditation? Any like full on panic attacks, like how to go to the hospital kind of scenarios? Nothing like that. Um, it's worse when I fly. I'm not a good flyer. I do have medication for that. Um, but like in general, I just sometimes wake up and I'm just like, um, 
have an overwhelming feeling of doom and gloom. And I don't know why. And well, then I told myself, everything's okay. Go to work. Yeah, I had to, <laughs> I had to kind of stop uh, watching the news. I was watching pretty much every morning, and it just was kind of weighing me down. I just had to turn it off altogether. So I haven't watched the news in at least three or four days. Yeah. I, mean, I get I mean, a little alert to my break. phone. Yeah. So someone once told me that what you see and what you hear is how you feel. So if you are watching like horrible, like everybody's dying, this is happening, da 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 da, hearing negative thoughts all the time, that gets ingrained into your soul, your spirit, your mind, your body. So it weighs you down which then again can go into the whole immunity and having like a good physical activity and having a good like health defense. If your spirit and your mind is weighed down, you're more likely to get sick and other diseases are all more likely to happen because your whole body's out of whack. Well, your body starts to secrete cortisol, which is known to depress the immune system. So it's a downward spiral from there. So the I agree direction. with cutting TV off unless you're watching gossip girl like i'm binge watching it now because i have nothing else to do what else have you been watching these days you mentioned cheer cheer is such a cute show and it made me remind me of my like dance competition days so i'm watching cheer gossip girl up and vanished which if you're already kind of scared like i am i don't recommend that but it's a really good thing like the other day i saw this van and I thought it was following me, and I was like, I'm about to disappear. Nobody's going to know where I went. <laughs> but they just lived on the same street as me. Well, <laughs> especially, especially where you live. You're out in the dark woods. <laughs> I literally called Michael. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's this van behind me. <laughs> Did you ever watch that series? I think it was, uh, I can't remember what it was called, House on Haunting Hill or something like that. I watched that, too, but only in the daytime because I didn't yeah. want to have nightmares at night. It was good. I watched maybe four episodes, and I had to kind of stop. Because I also live out in the scary woods. Well, you need to finish it because it all ties together. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. I'll, I'll get back on it's it. It's good. During the day. Um, what <laughs> else have we been watching? <laughs> oh, we, we're um, going to – we started Messiah. We hadn't finished that. We started watching Shit's Creek, which is – absolutely hilarious so we caught yeah, up from, good things about that one it's so good it's so funny and then um we watched tiger king so we binge watched that in like two days all right so i started that one i watched about 20 minutes of it i had to turn you off you have to get past the first episode no i was into it it's just bad like i watched in the morning and then my daughter woke up and she's only two and this is kind of you know like she woke up and looked at the tv and there was like a tiger just eating like a Dear, <laughs> I was like, okay, probably not a good thing for her to watch. I turned off. You the circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> to give her another year at least. <laughs> <laughs> so I do plan on resuming that. It, it did catch my attention. Seems like a very bizarre little subculture. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know there was a thing as big cat people and big cat monkey rescue. people. And <laughs> Carol Baskin did it. But don't, you'll don't, see don't once you me. finish it. Right, you'll see when you that. finish it. All right, what about Ozark? Have you watched Ozark? I have not, but I heard good things about that. Season one was fantastic. I just started season two. I'm already into it. That show is we'll see. awesome. Jason Bateman is fantastic. Love well, it. we have a lot of catching up to do with, I guess, our television shows since we have nothing else to do. But here is a challenge, which I think we should do at the end of every podcast. All right. We should do like a weekly challenge and see who completes it. We can do like a voting thing, like for air, all of everybody that's listening between Dr. Chris and Bree, who's actually going to complete the challenge, which I feel like I will over yeah, you. Yeah, you already watched Because you get sidetracked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the challenge this week um, needs to be something physical and mental so that way we can tire ourselves out and help build up our immunity by taking being outside and getting some vitamin d um right, i, I got the you have to do at least two miles you have to do two miles every single day wait walk or run both 
walk and run. So I can walk a mile, run a mile? Yes. Or, okay. Okay. That's maybe doable. Cause I, and yeah. if you have to walk and then run and then stop, walk, run, oh, that's yeah. fine. Just but you just have two to miles. complete two miles every single day. All right. Seven days. And there has to be video evidence because I don't want to, uh, you can't cheat. Seven or days? do map my run, which is a great app because then we can be friends. And if you don't do it, I will see. What was that through? Map my run. Oh boy. Seven days. We can't take one day of rest. No. <laughs> That's the challenge. Okay. You can take a day of rest if you want to. I'll just win. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're on. So what are we gonna do for mental? Um, oh that is mental. Being out there focusing, being uh, in the sun, the sun will drain you. Okay, so that's both. That satisfies both categories. Yep. All right. All right. So send you have to, to mentally app. think I can finish this. I can well, wake up tomorrow morning and do this and not be like, oh, I'm tired. Okay. I think I could do that. Can we include our significant others? Yeah. They can cheer you on. All right. Well, are they going to sign up for this challenge as well? Oh, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah. So between the four of us, but is it teams or is it just individual? Well, the challenge here is we can't just walk away from the kids. So I'm just thinking that maybe that's not going to work. So let's just go individual. Okay. Individual. I, I can't. I can't leave a two-year-old in the house with a pit bull and a pool in the backyard. No. <laughs> for two miles. You know, she'd be going out that doggy door. So. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do individual. I'm sure Juliana is not going to be too happy with you signing her up for a competition. And then the winner has to buy the next bottle of wine that we would drink on the episode. No, the loser has to buy the next bottle of wine that we would drink <laughs> on the episode. I thought that was going to sneak by. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, awesome. I know my hair is getting long. I haven't had a haircut in like a month and a half now. My nails are hot mess. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. But then I'm like, it doesn't even matter because I'm not seeing anyone anyway. So, we'll how be come, just fine. How come women never say, I'm going to get my hair cut? They said, they always said, say, like, get my hair done. Or what is it you say? I say, I have, to get, I have a hair appointment or I have to get my hair done. Yeah. They never say haircut. Because I probably ain't going to cut it that day. So you go there and sometimes, it, oh, what do they do? They wash it. Uh -huh. They um, style, blow dry it, style it. If I need a treatment, they'll put a treatment on. Doesn't mean I'm getting it cut. Okay. I never put that together. <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother <laughs> bottle of opening up. The maintenance of being a woman compared to a man. <laughs> So then how come when my wife comes home from an appointment, I have to be like, oh, the haircut looks really good. She didn't say her haircut looks good. You just need to say her hair looks good. It's a way to get out of it. I just say, oh, you look beautiful. I just covers all bases. There you go. Take the easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So shall well, I, I think we're about to wrap up this episode of Popping Bottles. Um, I think we had a great discussion tonight, we learned about two different wines. I'm glad you picked red and I picked a white, so that's good. Well, speaking um, so of, take in, the, away. in the future, though, sorry to interrupt, are we, when we're face-to-face, -face, are we going to also drink different wines, or every week are we going to swap and one, one person picks one? Every week we can swap. All right, sounds good. So we'll have a oh, challenge. So for the challenge, for the challenge, um, the loser has to pick, but um, does the winner get to pick which bottle they want? I think so. Yeah. I like okay. That. Yeah. That sounds good. Loser buys, winner picks. Perfect. Uh, but you know I'm going to pick some expensive shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, we have to set a limit. <laughs> because we all are unemployed. <laughs> because we are on quarantine. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take it easier first. Oh, all right. So I will see you next week, same time, apparently same place, because we can't do anything. And um, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Look forward to talking to you soon. This is Pop and Bottles with your favorite nurse practitioner, Brian. 
And DJ Dr. Chris. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>